So I'm here to check out a furnace or a package unit that's not working. That one's not it. We got one over here that's just blowing cold. I went inside and checked the thermostats. They're on a zone system. And uh, so we got the key fob and a, and a block box key there, which is good. Let's find out what's going on. And up front, we got a draft motor running, but it's not blowing anything hot out. So there's obviously something not right with it. All right, so we've got a code here. It looks like code number seven, which is rollout switch. The closest thing to a rollout switch these have got is this little rollout switch there. Well, it's a carrier, so we need to make sure we check that heat exchanger because that's usually what ends up happening. The heat exchanger starts to crack. The blower blows on it, blows heat back into this area here and it starts to get too hot and that thing trips out which it trips out I believe at 190 with a 40 degree differential let's uh, go ahead and see if we can get this powered off check the belt and stuff we'll get in through there and check that uh, heat exchanger belts nice and tight don't feel like anything's bad there but if you notice these screws are all nice and shiny almost to the point where they've been taken in and out so many times it's been stripped out so let's take a peeky poo in there and see if uh, by chance that's the uh, heat exchanger and this one right here is just your limit switch I got the mirror out got way back in there looked around really good and even though it's a little you know darkened there there's nothing that looks bad at all everything looks really good checked around the top everything was clean and clear Let's uh, go ahead and get it back together, kick it on. Let's see if uh, when we unplug that, if that's the code, we actually get a seven. Make sure it's not, you know, off and off the limit there. Let's see if we've got some wires to loose. I just had one recently that tripped and there was nothing wrong with it. It was only a few years old. I ended up replacing the uh, rollout switch and didn't have a problem. The thing I noticed with these is they're kind of an open face limit. And so if you just barely touch it, it'll trip. So it doesn't take much. It's kind of, I always preferred switches that are sealed, kind of like the way that one is. I don't like the ones that are open, which you probably can see there that it's, it's open. That's not my preferred method. They just tend to get junk in them and you figure all that wind and stuff blowing in there, it can get inside there and can screw up the contacts on it. Get everything together there. Let's kick it on, see how this build acts. We should check the filters here in a second too. This being on a zone, it may have a little bit of a delay. Air filters don't look too bad. Just kicked on the blower and it squawks. Put that back on there. Go ahead and put this door back on. Seems like it's got definitely got a little leakage there. Not that that would cause it to roll back out over here have all day here got things to do speed it up a touch the zone should all be open so it should not cause a problem here they went to black for R lovely takes right on no problem gets kind of windy where we're at now watch this if I touch the back side of that just barely touch it there it goes it trips out yeah when it trips out it locks into a hard lockout and it should be number seven one two three four five six seven so the only way to get that to reset is to kill power to it and start over again. The easier way here is to kill the voltage. A little bit of a pop there when it kicks on. I mean, 
it could have maybe not ignited quite right. Let's blow those burners out. They look like they're fairly new. Crossovers look clean, clear cross. Let's go ahead and blow those out, blow all this dust out of the bottom, blow it that direction, and we'll blow through the burners. I'm gonna go ahead and kill gas to it, that way we don't have any problems with the... Man, what did we have before we had that? That sure makes it nice. See how she lights off now. She's probably all locked out. And it's probably in a retry. Should kick back on here in a second. There it goes. Didn't make that crazy pop that time. Burners look a little better. See the crossovers there look pretty good. Crossovers look like they're in the right spot. You can see that one right there. Rivets at. And then the other one is Crossovers are in the right spot. That's another thing I like to look for. Try one more time, see how she lights off. Let the fuel go, and then it's pretty smooth. It's a lot better than what it was. It was a pop before. We could have had possibly, you know, one of the burners didn't ignite. Eh, no, because the flame sensor would have caught it. I'm not real sure, guys. Like I said, that, that switch, I don't like that a new one I think that's the only thing it really could have been especially being just running now I'm gonna put my thermometer in there and see if I can feel anything but I really don't think it got up to 190 degrees I think it just false alarmed out you're gonna think I'm crazy but that really feels moist almost like more than normal it's not that cold out here but it makes me wonder did possibly water since that water is right there, it gets sprayed in there for some ungodly known reason. Maybe it was boiling off, caused some rollout. I mean, it really looks like it's speeding perfectly fine. I'm not seeing any rollout at all. It looks like it's going straight across, just like it should. The burners ain't quite the straightest things in the world, but it tends to happen. Yeah, that bracket there hold, usually holds it in there. Yeah. I don't straighten that up a bit. Now I did see that screw back here in the back was a little loose, so that whole bracket was going up and down. What I would speculate probably happens is you kind of come in here and you push down on this. And it does lift it up. And I mean you're kind of using it as your kneeling bracket there. Maybe it caused it to roll out a little bit. I don't think just one little poof would have done it. I mean, it would have most likely triggered that flame sense failure before it would have done anything else. Not seeing any other clues. If the draft motor would have stopped, it would have went off on the uh, uh, proximity sensor there on the end. At this point, I believe we're just going to end up uh, ordering a new rollout switch. Everything else looks pretty good on it. And it's shutting down. I can speculate all day, but that grill was right up here. If by chance it was too close to it, it could have recirculated. And that heat would have came right out of here, right to there. I could see that possibly tripping it out. I'm gonna go in and turn it on at the thermostat, but right now we're ordering a new rollout switch. But I think maybe, possibly, that had something to do with it. And it very likely could have been channeled with this patio furniture that's out here. So let's go kick it on, but right now it's not acting up. And uh, it should run a little bit better now than what it was. All right, it's running. See what kind of temperatures we get in here. I highly doubt it's anything crazy high where it would even come close. Yeah, we're already dropping down to 68. 
Let's try blocking it off a little bit. Let's see if that makes any difference, which I don't think it's going to. Yeah, it's going up a little bit. Hmm. Put a block in front of there. I held that block right up there this far away from it, and it didn't didn't rise much at all. I suppose it could recirculate it if the wind was blowing just right, but I don't think that's the case. I'm going to go with it. So sensor's getting weak, so we'll just get a new one on it. Filters are fine, belt's tight. I think they're due for maintenance here for long, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, head on to the next one. Well, we're back to replace that limit, which we've got the new one here ready to go. It was tripped out again on number seven. We got it yanked out. Go ahead and get it back in there and uh, we'll see how it does. Got the new one in there. Let's go ahead and put our fuse back in there. I didn't go get a lock yet to unlock it. Stink and disconnect. Let's see what she does. It's got a sewn panel, so it's gonna take a little longer. Ticked on almost immediately. She's a running. It's a little cold out here today too. Went ahead and punched a hole into that. Leatherman peeled that out. You can kind of see all that is, is just a cheap little switch. You can see how that would be. You can get dirt in there and stuff. You can see how that would cause it to malfunction. That really should be a sealed switch in my opinion. I think that's the whole deal here. It just needs to be a sealed switch. But yeah, you see that the uh, guts of it fell right out. That's that's kind of a kind of a crappy design. All that was was a piece of plastic inside there. It fell down here somewhere. Flipped upside down. It fell out. Let's open up this plastic here for a second. Yeah, all that is it's just a crappy little switch. You can see that it's had some arcing of some sort and it shouldn't have any arcing at all. So just barely making contact there. That's definitely not good. I bet you anything that's silver. That right there is going to be silver too. So that's that's what we got inside the switch. Literally, a normally closed circuit there with a little piece of plastic in between there. Bimetal disc pushes on it and it opens it up. Rocket science at its best. The bimetal piece there pretty much has got its design characteristics is what uh, causes it to bow inward and push on that. And she's running. Um, this, like I said, is the second one that I've had this happen on. And I haven't been called back to the other one that I know of. That'll wrap that up, guys. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.